Hello friends, how are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name's Taylor and I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And this is typically a knitting podcast, um, but we're just gonna talk about my yellow cardigan today. Um, I was told recently that this isn't a knitting podcast, so I might just not identify as a podcast anymore. I haven't decided yet, but that's not important. What is important here is that I finished my yell cardigan and I'm here to talk to you about it. If you enjoyed this video, if you learn anything from it, if you just like to listen while you're knitting or you're spinning or you're doing any other number of things, uh, feel free to subscribe and give this video a like so other people maybe find it also. I have all this information recorded in my Ravelry project page, so I will link to it below so that you can reference that if you need to. If you are not able to access Ravelry safely at this time because of um, its formatting issues, then message me and I'll give you any information uh, from my project page directly that you might need. Uh, feel free to reach out to me for any reason because I love hearing from you at all times. Um, all right, so this is my yell cardigan. It is designed by Marie Wallen, and it's published in her book, Shetland. I'm gonna go through all of my modifications with you so that if you like the way that my garment fits, um, or you're just making your own and you're wondering what you should do, it might be useful to you. The first modification I made to this garment was that I accidentally knit it five inches wider than I thought I was. <laughs> What I thought I could do in lieu of swatching was measure a sweater I've already knit with the same needles and the same yarn, but because it wasn't the same stitch pattern, like that sort of changes the tightness, I think, of your stitches. So my garment measured wider than I wanted it to. And so um, I basically realized, because at some point here, it was like, once you're once your garment measures X number of stitches, you're gonna split for the front and the body and you're adding steak stitches here so that you can continue to knit in the round um, without having to knit back and forth and then steak those stitches to create the armhole, right? I just remember thinking like, uh-oh, it's time to stop now. I need to knit this armhole. I think I might've knit an extra half an inch to an inch in length. So in my mind at the time, I was already thinking, oh no, my garment is gonna be a little longer than it should be. And then later on I come to find out, oh no, my garment is actually five inches wider than it should be. <laughs> so I'm thinking here, I'm making a garment that's way too big. I might run out of yarn. I don't think I will because I have more than enough, it seems. I was just afraid I was making something that I would look like I'm swimming inside of. At this point now, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is whether my armholes are going to be as wide as my arm will comfortably sit inside of the sleeve. When you open it up, it's not sitting against your armpit. Your armpit is totally free to sit against itself. And I feel like wool garments that are all up in your armpits, they get really smelly quickly. They tend to felt quickly because it's warm and it's moist and there's friction. And the only sweaters that I like wear out are ones that felt in the armpits. So I was really happy that I was investing so much time and money in a garment that would essentially never do that because it doesn't meet that area of the body. So anyway, I'm, I measure my arm. It's like 10 and a half inches or something. I measure a sweater that I'm wearing that I really like the fit of, and that's like 11 and a half inches or something. I believe that the sweater the yellow cardigans measurements is like 12 and a half inches or something around that part of, of the armhole. So I knew if I'm afraid it's going to be too small, as long as it's above like 10 and a half inches, my arm's going to fit. Ideally, it's like 11 and a half inches because this is the size of the sweater I like to wear. So um, I basically cast on enough stitches for it to be 11 and a half inches around the armhole. 11 and a half inches was wide enough for that to repeat three times, plus two stitches, which I decreased just to make sure that that armhole bottom is nice and full and tight. I continued knitting and then I decided I'm over following these instructions now. <laughs> I'm just gonna knit straight. I didn't do any shaping to the arms. 
And I did that intentionally because one, it was easier, um, but two, I knew that in this very large garment, the only area that would be form fitting would be this kind of elbow area. And if I just knit straight, it's gonna kind of flare out, which I feel like would be a nice kind of vintage look. And I definitely didn't want it to continue to be even narrower from there. Cause then it would look like I had this big garment and these tiny little arms. Um, so I wanted it to be somewhat loose, a continuation of looseness, like this theme of looseness I wanted to carry out throughout the sleeve, even if it was more fitted than the design intentions. I haven't spoken about the short row shaping yet and I would love to get to that. Uh, one thing I wanna point out though, is that the structure of this design, it sits higher on the body in the front and lower on the body in the back uh, because you're just knitting in the round, connecting at the top to kind of make this sloped square and then you're sticking up the center and knitting the collar around kind of almost like a 180 angle. Um, it's sort of bizarre, but not really. I mean, it makes complete sense and it's simple and gorgeous and I love it. But um, what it does is the collar kind of sits up on the neck here. And I think because this isn't a ton of, you know, this is stockinette and then this isn't a huge amount of seed stitch pattern here, this panel tends to roll out. You can already see it starting to do that at the bottom there. Um, which I have had a steam block flat a couple times already. So I think that if I wear it for some time with like a shawl pin, it'll flatten out and stay flat, but that is a little bit annoying. Um, but because of, because of this collar, the shoulder seam doesn't really sit at the shoulder. It sits behind the shoulder, right? Can you see how I have a seam here? You can't really see the seam, but can you see how the patterns on each side match up there? And then eventually they seem like perfectly here. So that was something I really, really wanted to do. I really wanted to knit half of the motif on each side to join together seamlessly at the seam. Now, obviously with short rows, it's not gonna match all the way up, but I really wanted each motif to be symmetrical. So in lieu of the instructions, the instructions are asking you to bind off X number of stitches, knit across the back, turn and cast off the same number of stitches and purl in color work back again so that you're knitting two rows as you bind off stitches on each side. What I decided I wanted to do instead to omit purling and to have the visibility of my motifs to decide where I wanted each of the short rows to start. What I did instead was I slipped, let me find it here. I slipped these stitches onto my right needle. So instead of binding off, I just move the stitches over so they're always live. And then I picked up new yarn and I knit in color work across the back until I'm the same number of stitches from the other side. And then I just slipped my needles around again to be back at the, with the right side facing, to be back on the right side, to again, slip the, the same number of stitches, where are we at? All right, so to slip the same number of stitches and then pick up and knit across again and then stop the same number of stitches before the end. So each time I'm basically binding off, but I'm not really binding, I'm just leaving them live from both sides within one row. So my short row shaping is essentially half as tall than the instructions, which I was fine with because I'm already making a garment that's too big. So in the grand scheme of it, like whatever difference that height makes isn't really all that significant when the garment is already oversized. That was my rationality. And I'm actually really happy with it. I feel like anytime you have steaks in the armholes, you're gonna get a little bit of a bulkiness to that seam, but I'm okay with it. In their project pages were 
stressed about how many steak stitches there were. I just did what the pattern told me to and it worked out for me. Um, but if you are knitting steak stitches and you want to add extra, I think it's always okay to add extra as long as you have enough yarn. Um, and speaking of having enough yarn, I was concerned after knitting the body and beginning the first sleeve that I might not have enough of some of my color work colors for the second sleeve. So I did do a couple swaps. You can see that these repeat. Um, and by the time I got to here, I was afraid I wouldn't have enough of this color for the second sleeve. So I swapped um, this bright green and, and light blue with the main colors here because I felt like they kind of mirrored the contrast similarly. And then in this pattern here, I have a bright kind of brick red and I didn't have quite enough of that. So at least I didn't think I did. I probably would have if I just trusted that I would, but I didn't trust it. And I used the kind of slightly different color that is also in this garment, it's this one here. I'm editing this video and I just noticed for the first time that the very last chart of the sweater, I knit completely wrong. There is no star in this sleeve like there is in the body. Do you see how that star is a star and that's not a star? I just totally messed this up so bad, but I don't care. You can't really tell. It doesn't really matter. So I've been wearing this garment as much as I can in like the 100 degree weather <laughs> because I really feel like wearing garments is going to show you a lot more about them and how they fit and how they wear and how the fabric behaves. I've really been trying to wear this to get a sense of how it wears. And like I said, the collar does roll. So if there's anything that I can do to keep that from happening, I'd love to know. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you would do. Anyway, it has that very wide body and I like it. It's, it's a beautiful jacket. It's, I added up the cost of my materials. Um, I haven't already told you in this episode on my channel, but in previous videos, I've talked about how I knit this garment with um, this green color is Biche and Bouche Petite Lamb's Wool. Uh, the cream color here is the Fino Garn Rauma yarn. This light blue color is Elemental Effects Two Ply Shetland Wool. Um, and this is the Two Ply Jumper Weight in Jameson and Smith. So I used a lot of different bases in this garment. I love to do yarn substitution and everything I make. It's like part of my creative process. I would say that the Rauma Phenogarn is like my favorite new yarn. It's the, it's, I want a full sweater in that yarn and it's so affordable, like that's attainable in the near future, I am sure, whenever I decide I'm gonna buy yarn again. Um, but anyway, I would totally knit with any of these yarns again and again and again not sponsored, just a fan. And this is my yell cardigan. Before we go, I'll show you really quick the inside to my color work. I wove in all the ends, um, even in the sleeves, which you can't see, but I just felt like if I'm gonna go through the work of completing such a huge project, I might as well pay it the attention it deserves. Yeah, so what do you think? Do you like this garment? Would you make it yourself? Let me know in a comment below. And I wanna thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.